Hello friends, and welcome back to another video. Some of you may have heard the absolutely tragic news that Garfield Eats... Garfield Eats is no longer with us. F. Yet from beyond the grave, it still haunts me. You've probably already heard this, but on the Instagram post where Nathan Masri announced Garfield Eats closing, he evidently couldn't find a picture with people in the restaurant, so he appears to have photoshopped you and Thursday into a picture of the empty restaurant. Figured it was important that you know. Now, when I saw the picture that this Tumblr ask was referring to, when I when I tell you that I shed a single tear, you've got me and Thursday, as promised, uh, Quentin Reviews, and another person who a lot of you guys have commented is Thought Slime, which would make sense, you know, trifecta of YouTubers captivated by Garfield Eats. However, Justin McElroy is tagged in the photo instead. But most importantly, that is not a picture of Garfield Eats. That is not a picture at all. That is a painting, and it's called Nighthawks. It's famous for general late night liminal space vibes and the existential horror implied by there not being a door. So I ended up saying in response to this ask, that's not actually Garfield Eats, that's the painting Nighthawks. Love the implication that while it may be gone, we are forever sealed in doorless Garfield hell. With Nathan Masary in our hearts. I am obsessed with this image, it's horrible, I hate everything about it, and I love it. But before we get into it, I need to tell you all about this week's sponsor, Audible. I personally really like the convenience of audiobooks, I really like listening while I multitask, I think it's an amazing solution for people who feel like they don't have the time and or attention span to sit down with a physical book. If you've never tried listening to your books, I highly recommend it. I'm just about to start Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett, probably later today, and I'm so excited, I've heard nothing but good things. And Audible is now giving its members even more with the all-new Plus catalog, Filled with thousands of audiobooks, podcasts, audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, sleep tracks to help you get better rest, and even more. And you can start exploring all of this content today, right now, well, after this video. So head on over to audible.com slash strangeons or text strangeons to 500, 500 to start your 30 day free trial, get one free audiobook, and to start browsing Audible's all new plus catalog. A little bit of background on Garfield Eats if you haven't seen my previous two videos on it, which they're old. So Garfield Eats was a restaurant in Toronto, restaurant in the vaguest sense, a quick, a quick mobile intergaging restaurant. They had lasagnas, Garfield shaped pizzas, Garfuccinos, all very normal things that you would expect. The whole branding of it was an absolute mess. Like the target, the target audience was like someone who was number one, a whore for capitalism who would buy random overpriced shit just because it had Garfield on it, but two, also very environmentally and ethically conscious, and also an epic gamer who is going to spend hours on the intergaging that's engaging and entertaining. Garfield app, and also possibly a child, but also nostalgic for a cartoon that peaked decades ago. Like, I don't you know anyone my age who remembers Garfield as anything but like unfunny boomer humor comic strips. Also memes and like lasagna cat or the I'm sorry John Reddit type eldritch horror <laughs> stuff. Fan and Garfield is very superior to Canon Garfield, if I do say so myself. But also is super woke and up with the technology and intrigued by innovative business models like takeout. Intergaging quick mobile restaurant is just a stupid way of saying they do takeout. And they also have games that you have to pay for on the same app where you do the takeout. Like, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> By the end of its life, Garfield Eats was a haunting empty room filled with Garfield merch, with iPads mounted on the walls where you could order food and then staff would come bring it out from the back. I'm sure the question you are now asking yourself naturally is, why in God's name? Like, to me it seemed obvious that nobody wanted this except for the eccentric owner of Garfield Eats, Nathan Masry. Like, he was, he was into Garfield. His whole thing, his whole vibe, and like just general hijinks, like coining the word intergaging, I think got a lot of people intrigued by Garfield Eats for the meme value of it all. Imagine if a boring person had tried to start Garfield Eats. It would have, no, it, it wouldn't have even died faster. It, it would never even would have started. It could not have happened. And I was blessed enough that Garfield Eats was based in my city. Everything always happens to the US, but for once, Toronto got something incredibly cursed. Since I learned about Garfield Eats initially from my Patreon Discord server, I ended up meeting up with some fellow Torontonians from that server, and we went to Garfield Eats in summer of 2019. And it was weird as shit. We got a Garfuccino, which was impressively flavorless. We got the carrot juice, which you know is only on the menu because it's orange and helps add to this weird brand of healthiness for a Garfield fast food restaurant. It's utterly baffling, but you know that's why the, that's the only reason it's on the menu, not because it tastes good. I mean, it tastes fine. It tastes like liquid carrots. It tastes like carrot juice, but who the fuck drinks carrot juice? Why? <sighs> I'm getting worked up about Garfield eats again. Anyway, we also got the Garfield head-shaped pizza, which was 
also impressively flavorless. The crust was literally cardboard around the edge and then just slightly uncooked for a little surprise in the middle. And the sauce on it was of course not normal tomato sauce that you would expect, but orange. It was orange. The most egregious offender of them all though was the big cow lasagna. What in the world? <laughs> We're gonna get back to this one. Just, just put a pin in that. Put, put a pin in that one. Boy, do I have surprises for you today. But skipping ahead to, to the present day, the current state of things, the physical location of Garfield Eats, of course, did, is closed down, but it did not close down without any drama. And most of this drama was discussed on Masri's Instagram stories, which means the vast, vast majority of the receipts are, are lost to the wind. But I do have a few screenshots from once I had decided to make this video. I also have some fun ones from his coronavirus truther phase, which, by the way, did not stop him from selling Garfield brand masks to people, even though he thought the virus was fake. But I'm not mentally or emotionally equipped to go there now or ever. Uh, moving on to the screenshots about the rent slash landlord drama that I have. Okay. So an article was posted announcing the closure of Garfield Eats titled Toronto's Most Bizarre Pizza Joint Shut Down by Landlord for Overdue Rent. Masri posted a screenshot of this to his story saying, Amy, report the truth. I can only assume Amy is, is the woman who wrote this article. Um, don't be a fake bully. You've terrorized Garfield Eats since day one. WTF is your problem. Utterly baffling that Amy gets this treatment and I don't, even though I've been nothing but critical of Garfield Eats. We paid greedy land monster up until November and I called it quits as per press release sent to you. Simply copy and paste at blog to you. Do your job righteously. We got proof of transfers. If we show them to you, will you report that you are a Garfield Eats hater and lied to the public? Um, and you can see he's, he's crossed out, shut down due to overdue rent and put a big lie on there. <laughs> I just, just, Garfield Eats embraces the future of online virtual shopping in COVID-19 and not brick and mortars by unempathetic land monsters. We have decided to shut down, not due to overdue rent, as per fake report by BlogTO, as usual, but rather it's a strategic business decision to build a lean, a lean caddy company during uncertain markets, narrowing our focus to one popular item, frozen big cow lasagnas. Spoilers, that's, that's spoilers for later. Okay, for now we're gonna take a look um, at this um, evil lying blog to article. One of Toronto's weirdest pizza joints has become another casualty of an overdue rent issue doing, during the pandemic. Garfield Eats has brought a bizarre level of joy to the city since it opened serving cat-shaped pizzas covered in neon orange sauce in homage to the classic cartoon character. A release in keeping with the founder Nathan Masri's eccentric nature from happiness manager Darshan Patel announced that the storefront closed last Monday. The release simply states that Nathan Masri had enough of the landlord's shenanigans during the pandemic and called it quits for the Garfield Eats storefront only. It has a screenshot of this tweet. We live in a digital era in an inter interconnected world. Let landlords beat land monsters while we innovate and revolutionize. The store's fearless leader, Nathan Masri said, this is, yes, Nathan, this is a, Nathan Masri is tweeting this quote that says, fearless leader, Nathan Masri said, <laughs> He's like that, just, okay? Um, it is sad to see restaurants closing, but we live in an era of shifting economies and transition from information society driven by tech. We must embrace it while landlords still live in the past. So I'm sure at this point you're thinking this article that is supposedly filled with slander and lies uh, is, is quoting the press release and is saying all of the same things that he said. What could possibly be wrong with it? According to a spokesperson for the landlord, large rental reductions were offered for eight months through the summer, summer and fall, but claims Garfield Eats only paid 35% of the rent. The spokesperson also claims the landlord took large losses monthly and had to cover expenses out of pocket just to help the pizza store owner survive. According to the landlord's spokesperson, the operator of Garfield Eats also broke the lease with hardly any notice and left the place in a total mess, which had to be cleaned up at the landlord's expense. The article at least, like, it clickbaits you, but then it gives you the full story from both points of view once you read the whole thing. It seems like a good way of summarizing the truth would be he let he broke the lease of his own free will because he couldn't pay the already heavily discounted rent because nobody went to the Garfield restaurant. You'll notice how he's always on about the fact that landlords are all greedy unethical monsters which okay bit deep for a channel where I mostly look at memes. However I want you to know um he is not the working class hero that you need. He doesn't say things like landlords are unethical because he's actually critical of capitalism. He says it to deflect from the fact that nobody went to his Garfield restaurant and he's going to be absolutely fine because his father is probably richer than God and we're going to be dealing with his shenanigans on social media for many years to come. Another little Garfield eats drama that is near and dear to my heart is I guess the, the Google reviews thing by Nathan Masri. Google reviews destroy young entrepreneurship. Ever thought, sat there and thought to yourself, Google, Google reviews 
You know, they really destroy young entrepreneurship. What in the heck does that mean? Let's find out. Imagine dreaming of owning your own brand one day and decide to become a risk-taking soul, rising to become the best version of yourself. Thinking this is your calling and purpose, finally, you decide to start you, you, you own business somewhere on this Earth's crust. Great job, millennial! Now you are on your way to perhaps running the next disruptive billion dollar valuation of the century under the age of 34 years old like Brian Chesky founded Airbnb at age 27 years old more young entrepreneurs that he fetishizes, etc, etc. Perhaps you don't have such big aspirations for yourself because you just don't think that big and instead you just open a 1,000 square foot pizza shop in your hometown. Moreover, your pizza brand could become the next Pizza Hut sensation worldwide if it weren't for those malicious Google reviews fueled by spiteful intent. <laughs> But is it freedom of speech and every human being is entitled for their own opinion, right? Google reviews do not identify ethical parameters to determine the intent of the reviewer in their algorithm or the other means to ensure that young entrepreneurs or family businesses who have mortgaged their entire house or invested their life savings into their dream business do not file bankruptcy, God forbid. Those, okay. Garfield Eats got bad reviews because the food was bad. And apparently it is a uh, widespread systemic issue that, um, Young entrepreneurs and all mom and pop shops are, what if they lose their house because people are mean in Google reviews? Nobody's mean in Google reviews just for the hell of it. You got bad reviews because the food was bad. This is not a thing. So if you go over to the Google reviews for Garfield Eats now, you'll notice there's like this whiny condescending message posted under all of the bad reviews. And probably because they can't get them removed because they're all clearly real reviews. The amount of fake reviews in this case, meaning the good reviews, which it's also my opinion that the good reviews are the fake ones. So the amount of fake reviews for this restaurant are staggering. Please, if you have any self-respect, you'll stay away. Do you really want a subpar pizza in the shape of Garfield head? Really? Like round is pretty awesome shape for a pizza. Square isn't bad either. Rectangle, also not bad. Garfield, not a shape. And then you get this. Oh, oh. <laughs> This is a spammy or hateful review with bad intent, and the account has been reported to Google for irrelevancy. <laughs> Nathan Mazur has diagnosed you with irrelevant. And appears not to be a genuine customer from our database, we apologize to our fans, and please be mindful and skeptical of all Google reviews which are irrelevant. Love me, feed me, don't leave me. Thanks, Garfield. I ate here and ended up with gut rot. <laughs> The only reason I came was because YouTuber Ken Domic was here. The prices were high and the food quality was low. This is not spam. Went here for a weekend trip to Toronto before school starts. So if the owner replies, oh, oh, read between the lines. And what do you know? But oh, oh, this is a hateful review with bad intent. And the account has been reported to Google for irrelevancy. There's someone just copy and pasting this under all of the one star reviews without even reading them. And it's my opinion that uh, the bad reviews are the real ones because um, I, ha I have tried the food. I have ingested. Garfield's secret sauce. It, it certainly was not a forgettable experience. And it makes complete sense to me that in lieu of not being able to get rid of the bad reviews, because they're all real, what is a young entrepreneur to do but pay for some good ones to raise the ratings? The review specifically about um, going because it was recommended by a YouTuber, I thought that name, the name Ken Domic, I thought that sounded, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but I, I thought that name sounded familiar and then I realized that review is a bit older, but Nathan Masri was posting about him recently because he did a live stream. Live lasagna mukbang, Garfield eats big cow lasagna. So this guy's got half a million subscribers. You'll notice about this live stream that there is a promo code uh, slapped right over it in big font. As a YouTuber, don't see why that would be the case unless he is sponsored or has some kind of deal with Garfield eats. If a YouTuber recommends you a product, even if that YouTuber is me, you should always go read other reviews where the person is not essentially being paid to like the product. We live in a crazy world where Garfield Eats is out there sponsoring people, so just be careful on the internet. Don't trust influencers for shit. Occam's Razor, the, the simplest explanation is probably the true one. Garfield Eats got bad reviews, not because of some global conspiracy to destroy young entrepreneurs, but because the food was bad and they couldn't afford to pay rent on the physical location because nobody asked for it to exist. Nobody needed this baffling, performatively woke and high-tech, creepy, empty restaurant slash merch store to serve their every need for orangey liquids. And when it was presented to us anyway, we went for the meme and then we never went back <laughs> because the food was borderline inedible. You might, you might have caught a few teasers in there, but but, but what is Garfield Eats up to nowadays? Let's find out.
everybody, especially the Garfield fans, do I have a big, fat, juicy announcement just for you. Finally, the drums, everybody. Our Garfield Eats frozen lasagnas. Oh my god, oh my god. Look at this, the world's first Garfield lasagna. Boom. So if you head on over to the Garfield Eats website nowadays, um, you've got this big advertisement for the frozen lasagna, which you can order online. Let's check that out. Apparently you can't click it. Apparently you can't click the order online button. Okay. Some Garfield comics. We've got those Garfield face masks I mentioned. Garfield mug. Garfield eats hats. Garfield eats clothes. Phone cases. Um, Garfield eats party cups. Clearly just the paper cups they serve to drinks in at the restaurant that they're now desperately trying to get rid of, which... Happy to help, Nathan. Happy to help. Did I pay $20 for a pack of paper cups from Garfield Eats? Oh, I absolutely did. Of the two stacks of cups that they sent me, one of them was not even the cups from the picture. <laughs> it was the Garfuccino cups. Frozen Big Cow lasagna shipped with an Ontario only. Orders outside of Ontario will not be fulfilled. Big Cow is a generous size of frozen lasagna, rich in Garfield Eats secret sauce and delicious creamy bechamel sauce filled with farm cowboy cut ground minced beef. High in potassium, rich in zinc, iron, and vitamin B12. High in protein for muscle growth. Um, calories 97.2 for what serving size, I'm curious. Actually, I failed math, but hey. Now, you'll notice the price on this is $16.99. Um, boy, do I have some news for you about that. If you were to go through checkout buying only the frozen big cow lasagna, I believe the total comes out to something like $45? Because they have to ship it in like a big, like, cold container with ice packs in it. That's so much effort and so much money. But here I am, Boo Boo the Fool. <laughs> you know exactly where this is going. That lasagna that I tried last summer, I would describe as inedible. That was the food item that we just threw away the most of because we couldn't do it. There was like one tiny dent in it and like, that was it. That was, the texture was atrocious. It was really dense. Like, you know how the lasagna like slides apart in layers? It didn't, it was like one, hard, gluey, just block of substance. It was clearly something that came out of a freezer already. So I'm curious to see if this product is just exactly the same or if it's somehow better or somehow worse. That was a fucking job stick in the morning when I was getting my bread. Here she is. Cook frozen lasagna with lid loosened in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 60 minutes. Cooking time may vary. Ingredients, tomatoes, ground beef, durum semolina flour, Whole milk, mozzarella cheese, cheddar cheese, onion, ricotta cheese, eggs, green pepper, red pepper, water, garlic, carrot, unbleached flour, green olives, unsalted butter, olive oil, basil, capers. I mean, they got capers. It's concave in there. I love this just like cluster of all the cheddar cheese just dropped on there in a hunk. It's like only comes up like halfway in the tin. Okay, she has some character, but we're not judging too harshly quite yet. I'm not sure I want to put this, like, plastic Garfield Eats thing in my oven. While the oven is still preheating, um, I think it's time for a tour of my Garfield merch. Th these are the things that I meant to order, just the cups and the lasagna. However, we got a lot of other stuff dumped in that package. For example, my... this. I keep, like, every time I look down, I'm like, what in the hell? Because I have not seen myself wear this much color in a long, long time. It's very scary. But Zach, you just look like you're from Camp Half-Blood. I don't know how he knew that I'm a children's large before I even knew, but now we all know. Um, as well as this lovely Garfield comic mug that says, you didn't do anything remotely resembling work today, did you, Garfield? And Garfield says, well, dinner was kind of chewy. Ah ha ha! Garfield Food Fun by Jim Davis. Garfield's Cyber Safety Adventures which looks like a really, really great read. Garfield 1 and 2 Fat Cat Double Pack movies. This is one of the, um, the Garfield masks that I mentioned before. And finally, there is the styrofoam top to the, like, cold container thing the lasagna came in, which Nathan Masri was lovely enough to sign. The baffling thing about this, maybe this question has been answered. I got a thing that was like, Nathan Masri tagged you in a story, but it was the dreaded like one day ago, which means it's gone and you can't see it. I don't know if it's just standard protocol because they have so much trash to get rid of to like 
add a bunch of extra stuff to the order just for free, or if I'm special. The haunting face of my Garfield shirt in the reflection of the oven, like looming over the lasagna. Oh my god. Oh! Whoa. What in the world? It's gotta just be like the metal container expanding, right? I don't actually know. What are the sounds that are usually made by a frozen lasagna? Because I don't know. I'm filming this to document this, but I'm afraid. It smells like burning. It smells like it's on fire. It's still frozen. I think I'm gonna just discard the lid. I know it's just like, I don't, something is burning. Something is scary. I feel like it's the lid. This does yeah. smell like a food burning. Garfield update. <laughs> it smells like, what, what do you think it smells like? I think it smells like cheese. Yeah, I'm getting cheese. Like a processed, like cheddar cheesy kind of smell. It looks a little burnt on top. But lasagnas generally have like crispy tops. So like, that's fine. It doesn't smell like burning or anything like it did before which I guess the problem was the lid. Also, another thing is I was, <laughs> sorry. I was editing right there on the couch as I was waiting for this thing to cook. And I was watching myself like read the description of it. And a generous size is quite an exaggeration. I paid $45 for that. It looks like it's got about three layers. This is the saddest, thinnest lasagna I've ever seen in my life. Would you like a Garfacino? No. I, I'm gonna pour wine in the cup. Okay, wait, I can see the layers better. One, two, three, four. It's four. I have no desire whatsoever to eat this. There's some cheese right there, but it's really hard to find like any filling whatsoever. I think that's the ricotta cheese right there. That like mold looking substance. There's like the occasional speck of meat. I don't know, man, this is... That's really fucking sad. It's mostly just noodle. Oh, there's just a, oh, the steam got me, but that was just like a slab of ricotta that just, uh, okay. It's, oh, okay. Are you sure we can't just drink the wine out of the cups and like call it a day? We gotta try a bite. This is mostly plain noodles. And it's still better than what we had in the restaurant. $45. No, this is not even worth the like $16.99 or whatever that it's technically worth. But I paid $45. Or I, I think I really paid like 60 something including the cups. But I would have paid and you would have to pay $45 for this. I found a carrot. Just one little, little boy. Green pepper, red pepper, water, garlic, carrot, green olives, unsalted butter, olive oil, basil, capers. Where are they? It's not good. There's like no tomato sauce at all whatsoever. Yeah, that, I've been looking for that for like, a while. Like lasagna now. requires sauce, does it not? Oh, I wanted to follow up on, on the website. It said like 97 calories per serving. And I was like, that sounds questionable. For 250 grams, it's 430. This whole thing is 750 grams. For 250 grams, it's 430 calories. How did you even do that? There's nothing in here. It's if you eat this carrot, it's 97 calories. Actually, I failed math, but hey. Okay, but try the ricotta on its own. That is I, I kind bad of, ricotta. Why would you make me do that? <laughs> right? You just if put you your just own really sauce. love the texture of noodles and don't really care about the flavor, maybe. Maybe if you like covered it in your own tomato sauce before you did it. Maybe if you just made your own lasagna. <laughs> Can we do a sequel to this video where we buy $45 worth of lasagna ingredients to make a lasagna and see how much better it is? Gourmet makes Garfield eats lasagna. We rip off Bon Appetit and My Drunk Kitchen at once. God. Don't we always, though? Oh no, oh god. Archaeology. Uh, oh, that's weird. weird. That's where the meat that's was. That's weird, okay. That's hilarious. It was there all along. We found the meat. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh, this is not appetizing. This explains a lot. Yeah. Oh, there's the sad dry ricotta again. My favorite. I feel like if they served this to me in like our high school cafeteria. That would make sense. I would eat this before I if would. I were 14 and absolutely ravenous and they served it to me in my school cafeteria. It's edible. Not 97 calories, nor is it a generous size. Nor is nor, it worth 45 bucks. Nor is it worth $45, nor does it have any ingredients <laughs> or layers or anything. It is lasagna only by the lowest bar definition. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is the grand conclusion to the Garfield Eats trilogy that I even I didn't know was coming. See ya in another video next week, my dudes. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> it's not orange.
<laughs> I just realized it's not orange. Oh, it's true! It's not orange. What does it all mean?